This is exactly right. Welcome to the mini-sode. This is my favorite murder, the mini-sode, where we read you your stuff. So let's start it off. The subject line of this me- uh, email is $10,000 at the Goodwill. Hey, y'all. Love the show way too much to be healthy. I was at work this week and was extremely sad that I'd already binged all of the episodes. I was scrolling through to see which one I was going to listen to when I saw that I somehow missed a mini-sode. Uh, as I was excitedly listening to mini-sode 50, I heard y'all read about how someone found $10,000 cash at the Goodwill. Funny story, my grandfather was an old dr- old school drug dealer what? and used to hide his money in all kinds of crazy places. Under the doghouse, under my dad's baby stuff in the attic, oh my God. under trees, and apparently in clothes as well. <gasps> when he went to jail when my dad was young, my grandmother divorced him and donated <gasps> all of his clothes to Goodwill. <sighs> he was released a few years later and came back to the house to collect all of his things and subsequently to find all of his cash oh. according to my dad my grandfather laughed in my grandmother's face when he realized she had literally given away over twelve thousand dollars worth of cash Holy that was shit. sewn into all of his jackets throughout the house no maybe the murderino who wrote in about her love for vintage clothing somehow found my to be <gasps> inheritance anyway keep up the good work ladies can't wait to see you in uh atlanta this fall stay sexy and stick to legal occupations so that you can use a bank like a normal fucking person <laughs> love s why do people hide money in things that can be given away or just not hip their wife to like right. what is going on oh just man. tell one person like the shit i find in my purses i'm like and it's not money but it's like how the fuck did this get in oh my god thank god i don't have money to hide anywhere okay uh this is called they dusted the cat food container for fingerprints Hi, excellent podcasters and your assorted furry creatures. Steven, I guess that means you too. One day in October, a few years ago, I was working from home. At around 10, in the, do- at around 10 the doorbell rang, and when I peeked out the uh, window to see who it was, I caught a glimpse of a creepy man and a wife beater. No fucking way I was opening the door to that. After I failed to answer the door, he cut across my yard to my back fence and opened the gate. By now, my brain had slowly kicked in, and I had picked up the phone and dialed 911. The man banged hard on my back door, and I fled to my bedroom closet like a small child. No sooner had I given the operator my address and told her what was happening, than he had busted the lock open and was in my house. Fuck. 100% don't know what possessed me to do this, but I marched out of my bedroom and yelled, get the fuck out of my house. Because my house is so tiny, I practically ran him over as I emerged from the bedroom and I scared the ever loving shit out of him. He turned and ran. And as he fled through the kitchen, he picked up a plastic container of cat food that was sitting on the counter. (laughs) He yelled, get away, bitch, and flung the cat food at me. I swear I'm not making that up. I stood in the kitchen and watched him get into a maroon Pontiac, which sped away. I told I told myself to remember the license plate, but I was too freaked out. In just a few minutes, a couple of police officers arrived. I told them the story, and upon hearing what the perpetrator had touched uh, that had touched a plastic container, they called a forensics team. I wish I had thought to take a picture of the giant crime scene van that pulled up outside my house. <laughs> it was cool and totally horrifying at the same time. They told me they got a few prints, but since I never heard anything about the crime after that, I assume they never caught the guy. The moral of the story is if a shady guy rings your doorbell and tries t- and further tries hard to make sure no one is home by pounding on your door, freaking yell something as always stay sexy and keep a container of cat food handy in case the crime scene technicians can use it krista so like i think he was banging on the doors and like no one yelled anything so he was like great no one's home i'm gonna break in and like burglar this place i just like the idea that she was so scared in the beginning and then somewhere in there in the like in her own bedroom closet yeah she just was like you know what fuck this shit yeah Uh, that's really exciting she waited to scream get the fuck out of here until he was inside of the house yeah and And like like something came over her yeah i'm not fucking hiding in here well she's lucky that yeah she's very lucky that it was just cat food container (laughs) and also how rude but it's also so weird that they would 
fingerprint. I don't know. That's it's cool. Uh, okay. The subject line of this one is accidentally went to jury duty on acid. <laughs> Dear Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and Putz, in 2012, I graduated from Illinois State University and moved in with my boyfriend, now husband, the same day. He had been staying with his dad in Indiana, so we found an apartment near in nearby Valparaiso probably not uh, indiana we were young and without children so we participated in a lot of partying after living there for three years i was selected for jury duty being a lifelong true crime fan i took the calling very seriously i read the instructions thoroughly and was prepared to arrive at the courthouse on monday morning the saturday before i was supposed to go my boyfriend and i went to chicago to look for apartments as we were planning to, on moving back home we ended up finding the perfect place and signed the paperwork that day. That afternoon, we decided to celebrate the new apartment by taking some acid. Oh, no. <laughs> of course, the jury duty on the, was on the forefront of my mind, so I figured I'd take the acid now, trip through the night, return to normal Sunday, and arrive Monday morning ready to go. At first, my plan worked. By Sunday evening, I was no longer tripping. The only problem was that I couldn't fall asleep. So to solve this problem, I took two sleeping pills and passed out. No. I woke up Monday morning feeling exhausted and just not myself. For some reason, I bypassed the business casual outfit I had laid out, put on jeans and sneakers, and showed up with wet hair. Oh, geez. By this time, I'd realized that I just needed to focus on getting through the day and that taking the sleeping pills was maybe not the best idea. I was directed to a room to wait for instructions. A woman with a flowery dress walked in and began telling us how the day was going to go. I was staring at her dress and trying really hard to focus on what she was saying when all of a sudden the flowers in her dress started moving. Mm -mm. I shifted my gaze to the floor and then the geometric pattern, uh, uh, that geometric metric pattern was also moving. Mm -mm. Yep, the sleeping pills had somehow made me start to trip again <laughs> and I was about to enter a courtroom. Mm -mm. By the time we made it to the jury box, I had woken up and was ready to participate. The case was about someone who was being accused of selling heroin and the cops had used confidential informants to charge him. Let me say right now that I don't support the sale of heroin, but <laughs> being that I was on drugs, I wasn't processing things normally. For the 30 minutes that I was in, court, in the courtroom before the judge asked me to leave, I managed to tell the prosecution that confidential informants are snitches. Oh, no. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> I believe I said, you mean snitches? Oh. And that I don't trust the police and that uh, I made a small speech about the heroin epidemic. That part's not bad, but totally not appropriate at the time. Oh Somehow I got myself home, passed out in the middle of my living room floor on top of my laptop. Stay sexy and don't take drugs before jury duty. And it's signed your fan page. Oh my God. She's flagged now. <laughs> like her name is flagged <laughs> as someone to watch. Uh, the idea that there must have been a point in that, like her standing up and giving a speech yeah. where she came to talking. Yeah, yeah. Because the decision to stand up and make a speech was not a conscious no. one. There's just no way. It just like started happening. And then it's like, what the fuck am I like, like, doing? Oh, no, I'm talking about snitches. You're ruining it for yourself. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, okay. This one is... Um, the time my friend's elderly neighbor got arrested. And there's a photo that I think Steven's going to pull up for us. Uh oh. Okay. This is the story when my friend's elderly neighbor got arrested. So my friend and I grew up on Cape Cod in a town called Yarmouth. At the, they spelled it out for me. Thank you. Oh, nice. At the time, my friend's parents had just decided to move out of her childhood home and move to Florida. None of the kids were living there at the time, but her youngest sister, who was in her mid-20s at the time, moved back in while her parents were figuring out what to do with the house. Cape Cod has the highest per capita elderly population in the state, so her sister thought nothing of the old guy that lived next door. Until one day, she hears some commotion outside and sees cops and a SWAT team members and such surrounding this old guy's house. So naturally, she goes out to investigate. <laughs> I guess the cops had to tell her several times to go inside because it wasn't safe, and she said something like, it's my property, I can be out here. But eventually, <laughs> she goes inside. <laughs> Don't. Uh... Don't go out there. So once the old man came out of his house and finally surrendered to the police, it turned out that this old man was no old man at all. He was really a 31-year-old who had been hiding from the police for four months. He was wanted for drug trafficking charges. But instead of leaving town, he decided to wear a movie-grade old man mask and stay in town. No way. I'm not sure how the cops figured out it was him. Maybe someone ratted him out or something. But it actually wound up being national news, which we all thought was hilarious. After all this, this now semi-famous picture, see below, 
Thomas, poor Stephen, of this mugshot next to a photo of him wearing the old guy mask, <laughs> which was, was his Facebook profile picture for a while. Let me see. Holy <laughs> no, he looks like a troll from troll movie. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, it's now an important part of the local fol- folklore. Stay sexy and trust no one, not even your elderly neighbors, Kara. Ugh. This guy looks like he was on Gilligan's Island and it's like Gilligan's Island old man makeup. Yes. It's, it's not good. It's um, and he looks proud of himself. It's nice of her to say movie grade. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's insulting to movie makeup <laughs> artists, <laughs> too. I mean, you know what it is, is I bet you he... Look, he that's a false nose for sure yeah and i bet you he like looked at something online yeah 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 it uh, looks like, like a him as an old man for sure though yeah it's not a, it's not a great job he probably down, downloaded his picture into a like benjamin yeah. button style app where it's like what would you look like super old and then did some kind of makeup thing on that how do you kind of fun to like walk around town like as an old man and like yes. people treat you differently probably that's right it's like a real tyra banks in the fat suit yeah. style social experiment that's right with america's number one meal kit hello fresh you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door all you have to do is cook and enjoy hello fresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality from step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go by. This is just simply titled Car Accident Mystery. Hmm. Hello, MFM fam. Love your podcast. My wife works in the ER and came home one day with this crazy story. She got a call that a patient was coming in after a rollover motor vehicle crash. EMS reported she was ejected from the vehicle and found in the bushes near the accident. When the patient arrived, she was unconscious, but other than a scrape on her knee, looked unscathed. Due to her lack of consciousness, they decided to place a breathing tube, which is standing procedure with this standard procedure with this type of thing. Um, The moment after pushing the meds to intubate, Um, The patient began screaming hysterically, Mm. but since the meds had already been given, they had to intubate anyway. They sent the patient to a full body scan, but nothing was found. The social worker thought that the patient looked familiar and said that she would investigate. Meanwhile, my wife sent the patient to the ICU and went on with her shift. At the end of her shift, she went back to the social worker to follow up. And it turns out Mm. this patient has Munchausen syndrome. (gasps) When talking to the police, this woman was never even in the car. It turns out this bitch was walking down (gasps) the street, witnessed a car accident, and then threw herself into the nearby bushes. What the when fuck? EMS, when EMS arrived, she played dead, pretending to be unconscious, and EMS assumed she was ejected from the car. The whole time the nurses and doctors were evaluating her, she was awake. Oh my God. My wife estimated that from the ambulance ride, trauma admission to ER, and then the ICU stay, it cost her $30,000 in medical expenses. Holy shit. Love you guys. Shit. Aaron. Oh. Oh my God, that's <laughs> awful. How sad though. It's too. terrible. It's terrible, but I, what I'm laughing at, because I should explain why I'm laughing yeah. so hard. Just the coincidence that a person with Munchausen's yes. is walking down the street when a terrible, I mean, a rollover car yeah. accident is a huge thing. And the first thing she thinks of is, I'm going to dive into the bushes and get me a piece of this action. Yeah, and it's like, oh, you might get fucked up from this more than you fucking... Well, I have a car accident one, too, a little bit, but it's lighthearted. 
<laughs> so don't worry. Oh my god. Uh, this was called MF uh, Minnesota number twenty seven update. Lighthearted. Hello, MFM team. You read my submission about my EMT dad back on Minisode number 27, and I thought I would provide you an uh, update. A small refresher. When I was a kid, we had come upon a flipped over minivan on the side of the desolate road with a mom and several children trapped inside. I was a bit fuzzy on the details, but I remembered my dad coming back to the car covered in blood after performing life-saving measures. Casual. After that episode aired, I told my brother to listen, and once he finished, he messaged me, wait, you didn't even tell them the best part. And then she says, what best part? So my brother went on to tell me that, yes, everyone in the car survived. Somehow the woman was able to get my dad's contact info and sent him a Christmas card every year, giving him updates about the kids and continually thanking them for saving their lives. One year she sent him a small guardian angel pin that my dad put in his truck. Cut to a few years later, my dad and my brother get into a horrific car accident near our home. The truck was T-boned and completely totaled. Fortunately, my dad and my brother walked away without a scratch. Whoa. Yeah. My dad was really upset as he was unable to get the pin out of the car before it went away to whatever smashed up cars go. Mm -hmm. But I'm 100% sure that this was a buttload of good karma coming back his way for saving that whole family years prior. Just wanted to give you guys an update. Can't wait for my rad dad to walk me down the aisle next month. He truly is the best. Stay sexy and make sure to cross-reference your stories with your siblings before you submit them (laughs) them to a podcast. So true. Jenna. (laughs) That's hilarious. Wow. Oh, thank God they lived. I I mean, Jesus Christ. Both of the car accidents. Shit, man. They're the worst. So bad. I hate them. Well... Send us your shit. Send us your car- cars and horror stories. <laughs> uh, My favorite murder, Gmail. And stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, you want a cookie? <laughs>